In our previous video, we have seen that how VS2010 helps us to minimize our deployment issues by providing you know the one-click deployment screen and by creating packages. Now there's one more issue which we face uh, as a part of deployment and that is a web.config file versioning. Normally when we talk about web.config file, it has connection strings, you know, it has uh, values, uh, means uh, configuration values, which are application needs. And depending on environment, in other words, depending, you know, it's a, de it's a development environment or it's a go live environment or staging environment, the web.config file values can change. Now this thing can be quite confusing in case you have large number of environments or if you have many environments where, where you want to deploy web.config files with different values. Now in order to minimize these issues, uh, there's one more feature which is provided by VS2010 and ASP.NET 4.0 which is called as the web.config transformation. By using web.config transformation, what you can do is that you can create a default web.config file with some default values and later on you can you can you know create new web.config files from the default web.config and you can override or you can add or you can include new values in as per your environment. So by doing this, what you can do is basically, you know, you can have different web config files uh, with some base values and then you can override as per your environment. So let's try to see a demo of this and let's try to see, understand that how this new feature web.config transformation can help us to minimize our uh, web config versioning issues. Now let's consider a simple project over here called as web config transformation, which has a web.config file. And in this web.config file, we have a connection string called as my database, which currently connects to my development database.mdf. Now, what I want is basically, I would like to create different kinds of web config file, like uh, my, my acceptance test web config file, my production config file, my uh, debug config file, and my release config file, etc. with, you know, different uh, connection strings and different connection values so that I can take this web config file and I can deploy those web config files on the appropriate environment. So in order to add different config files or different kind of config files uh, for different environments, what you need to do is basically you need to go build configuration manager and then you can click on new of the active solution configuration to add up a new uh, configuration file to your uh, solution explorer or to your application. Now you can see that I have already added a lot of configuration files over, files over here like the go live, my test, production, etc, etc. Right, so what we'll do is now we'll go to our solution explorer here. Now in order to uh, basically you know, get those configuration uh, in your solution, what you need to do is you need to right click on your web.config file and you need to click on add config transforms. Now as soon as you click on add config transforms, what it does is it actually you know creates all of those necessary files over here, you know, you know, which are basically nothing but those are like kind of child files which belong to the main web.config file. Now what we'll do is, you know, as we have said that basically we are, we are going to change this my database value for one of our configuration files. So currently here the my database value is my development database. Let's make this value as my production in the in the web.production.config file. So over here in the web.production.config file, I would like to see this value of my database as my production database. Now, in order to change your current web.config file, or I'll say your default web.config file to your environment config files uh, values, it's a two-step process. The first step is basically you have to search the web.config file with appropriate element, right? So, so you have to locate that element, and once you've once you've got the element, you need to basically go and set the values. Uh, that means you need to transform the values. Now you can see that there are various functionalities provided by the web.config transformation engine, you know, which can help you to search and transform your uh, web.config file elements and values. Now, in order to achieve our goal, right, where we said that you know we have a connection string in our in our parent web.config file, and if we want to change that connection string value to something else, what we'll do is we'll use the match function from the search and locate. So we will use the match function to get the name of the element, you know, where the connection string is stored, and then we will use the set attributes. To change the value so let, let's go back to the code and let's see how it is done now here's your parent web.config file or i'll say your default web.config file you know which has this connection string with my database and it has the database value set as my development database.mdf now in order to replace this uh, you know in our web.production.config let's say that we want to replace uh, the database name in the web.production.config what we have to do is that we have to basically go and keep the same name as it is. So basically it's going to be my database 
and as we said that the first thing is we have to locate it so what we are saying over here is that please use the match name in other words use this name to locate the element so what it will what this what this xgt locator will do is basically it will invoke the match function right and basically this match function will basically go and take this my database name and it will pull out the value from the parent config file right now the other one is a transform so basically we are using set attributes over here now the set attribute says that basically please go and set this the element which you have located right that is my database to this value and if you can see this value basically i have changed the value over here to my production.mdf so in other words what has happened now is i have two configuration files one is the web.config file which has the connection string which points towards my development database right and then i have web.production.config file which which is which is basically created for the production environment and which points towards the myproduction.mdf now so let's go and save this and let's build this application so now let's say that we want to basically deploy to the production environment so what you need to do is basically go to your build configuration manager and ensure that your active solution configuration is production at this moment and then let's test this by doing a publish so let me just publish this let me publish this in our file system let me just let me just select e drive and let's say my test publish right so right and let me go and publish this now what should happen is over here when i publish this i should see that the web config file should be having the my production.mdf file so let me just go open and go and open this web.config file in a notepad I'll just do that and you can see that over here this web.config hal configs has my production.mdf so in other words this deployment you know which i have created now or this deployment solution which i have created it's currently having the my production.mdf now if i go and basically just say let's go and change this configuration manager let's make it debug right now if i go and publish it so build publish right publish started publish succeeded let's go again to the directory now i should see over there my development mdf so let me just open this in a notepad and you can see that basically the value is my development database dot mdf so you know by using the proper locator and by using the proper transformation you can you know manage your web.config files you know as per your environment and as per your versions so i hope that this session was useful i do know that you know there are a lot of other settings in other words you know there are a lot of other features or functions i'll say rather you know which are there in the web.config transformation like match condition replace etc but i have not covered them because my whole point about this video is to cover the basics what you